Hello, and welcome to a priori story timeless. We're here with two fuzzies who really like fish, don't you? Yes, I like fish too. All right, well, we're glad that you could be here, Bob. You want to hold the orca closely? Good job. I don't know if you can be seen on screen. Maybe you'll enjoy a little time on this part of the lap. <clears throat> that will help you get more famous. Good job. Well done. Okay. So this is um, an Iroquois uh, legend, you know, also the uh, known as the Haudenosaunee. Um, I think it comes from the Oneida um, faction, I guess. Uh, there's uh, five founding tribes of the Iroquois. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, this is the story called Golasio, the woman chief. <clears throat> At the beginning of time, when Turtle Island was still new, a woman chief named Golasio ruled over an Indian village next to a large river. Godasio was a wise and progressive chief and people came from all over to live in her village. In those days, all people spoke the same language and lived in harmony and peace. Even when newcomers arrived in the village from far away, they had no trouble understanding the villagers or being understood themselves. Over time, the village grew so large that half the people lived on the north side and half on the south. They spent much time canoeing back and forth across the rapidly flowing river, especially those on the north side because the council house was on the south side of the river. Some complained about the difficulties of crossing the river and Govasio ordered a bridge be built to make transport between the north and the south easier for everyone. Shortly after the bridge was built, a white dog appeared in the village and became very attached to Godasio, following her everywhere she went. The people on the north side of the river became jealous of the dog and demanded that the chief kill the animal. When she refused, they returned to the north side of the river and destroyed the bridge. Distrust and bad feelings between the people on the two sides of the river grew so much that Goracio feared it would lead to war. Not wishing to see brother fight against brother, she proposed moving the south portion of the village up the river to a new home. Almost everyone living on the southern side of the river agreed to join Goracio and they built many canoes for the journey. Two young men, men built a special vessel for Godasio. They fashioned two large canoes together with strong poles and built a platform across the canoes for her to sit on, accompanied by her white dog. The flotilla of canoes led by Godasio's vessel stretched as far as the eye could see along the great river. After paddling a long distance, the voyagers came to a fork in the river. What's that? Yes, just like a, the fork between the north and the south factions of the village. Very good, insightful, Bob. The voyagers came to a fork in the river. Some in the flotilla wanted to take the branch on the right, and others wanted to take the one on the left. Unable to agree on which way to go, those on the right turned their canoes up the right-hand channel, while those on the left began paddling up the left-hand channel. And so the people began to separate. The two young men paddling Goracio's canoe disagreed as to which way they should go, and they fell into a violent quarrel. The man on the right began paddling to the right, and the man on the left began paddling to the left. And so strong were their strokes that Goracio's platform slid off its supports and fell into the river, carrying her, her possessions and her white dog with it. The people on the both sides of the river tried to rescue their beloved chief, but they could see nothing 
but fish swimming in the clear waters. The people on the right and the people on the left then tried to talk to each other, but they could not understand each other no matter how they shouted. When Gorasia drowned in the great river, what's that? Oh, or became a fish. Yeah, that's another version of the story. Thank you, Bob. Her people's language changed. This was how it was that the Iroquois were divided into many nations, spreading across the Americas, each of them speaking a different language. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the help, Bob. Thank you.